In the previous video, we introduced the SPI master in VHDL, and now we're going to test it. You know, always test your code using a test bench and looking at waveforms. If you can make a self-checking test bench, even better. Uh, it'll just save you so much time when, when you're trying to debug your code rather than going straight to an FPGA and building and synthesizing for, for two reasons. One, building and synthesizing takes a long time. So even if your project takes you know, 60 seconds to compile and program and everything else, that's 60 seconds that you have to do every single time you make any change, which is just, that adds up pretty quickly. The second thing is that actually getting any understanding of what's going on requires usually a logic analyzer or an oscilloscope or some sort of debug tool and you don't want to rely on those things because it's just tedious to set up and you have to set up what you're going to monitor in advance so I spend as little time as possible debugging on hardware as a general rule it's much more preferable to debug in a simulation environment stress your system stress your FPGA code with unknown corner cases and weird things and prove it all out in a waveform viewer and uh, again the self-checking test bench if you can make that that work because um, that's really the best thing so uh, with that in mind let's talk about uh, test bench for the SPI master this is a simple test bench probably not as rigorous uh, as one where if you want to prove this thing out 100%, you might want to go a little bit further, but this will at least show you that the SPI master is up and running and you can certainly test your particular situation. So I would recommend, you know, if you have a different SPI mode other than mode three, which is what this test bench is running in, you know, check that out, send some data back and forth, make sure that it, it'll work for your application. So um, whatever chip you're trying to talk to might have slightly different parameters and maybe just you know set your clock at the same rate things like that it's good to check those things out all right so we have some signals in the beginning constants normal stuff and then a procedure here which um, i generally like using procedures for doing stuff um, so doing something you're going to do over and over again it's simpler to wrap it up in a procedure than copy and paste the same code over and over again it's kind of like a function um, except that you can actually drive signals through a procedure in your design <clears throat> you need to define them up up top first so um, this procedure is driving some information on o data and o data valid and it's able to communicate with signals in the t in the test bench code too so for example, we you know you can wait until our clock, and our clock is the main clock of the of the test bench. So wait until a rising edge of our clock and then drive data valid pulse, wait for another rising edge, wait until the master is ready. Um, kind of handy way to wrap some code that you're going to do over and over again, like sending a byte um, inside of a something that's you don't have to write this code every single time. So that's handy to do. Clock generation to just generate a test bench clock. Uh, here's where I instantiate the UUT, the unit under, under test. This is the SPI master that we just talked about. So this should look very familiar. And then here's the test. It's pretty concise. Um, you wait for some amount of time, de uh, assert reset, de assert reset, and then send a byte, send two bytes, and say test complete, done. So um, this this right here sends single byte, sends a byte out, and it's going to send. You have to the one kind of pain the pain thing about uh, VHDL is you have to if you want to drive a signal from a process, you have to give the signal to the process. It can't drive. You can't drive from a process without giving the, that signal as an input to it. So um, I'll show. You, I'll just show you. So send single byte gives master tx byte as an input to the process and then up here that's going to generate that's going to correspond to o data inside the process being driven so this is actually driving master tx byte um, but you need to get you can't just use master tx byte directly in the process which would be nice you have to give it the signal a little bit more typing um, in verilog for example you can drive signals in your test bench without having to give it in like, like you do here uh, master tx data valid that's what you're driving for your data valid pulse and when this is done you can look at the uh, master rx byte which is the output of the spy master and see what it received and what you'll notice here is i've done a loopback so what's going out on mosey is immediately being looped back into miso 
which is a handy trick. I usually use that for test benches where, especially with communication interfaces that have a transmit and receive. If you're transmitting something and you loop it back to the receive, then you know that whatever you're sending out should be what you receive. And that's just a easy and quick way to test that your um, SPI master or UART or whatever it is you're testing is actually working correctly. That's called loopback. And I've done that here. So what, what I send out, which is C1, on the master should be received because it's being looped back by the by the spy master on the miso line miso master in slave out yes that's right uh, so i should i'm checking master rx byte and making sure that it's the same as what i sent out so in this case i sent out c1 i should receive c1 and this is um this is a vhdl 2008 thing which i really like because you weren't able to do some things this easily before the HDL 2008. So you can do a two H string. H string is hex string. You have to cast it as an unsigned because this is, yeah, the HDL is strongly typed. And uh, this is just a nice way to convert numbers to strings for printing purposes. Uh, report just is a way to print something to the console or to the log for your whatever, when you're simulating stuff. So then I send, so I send C1, BE, EF and say test complete and we're done. Let's take a look at the test bench. Here we go. This is a great website. This is edaplayground.com. It is a free, it is online, so no downloads, uh, simulator, which is super convenient for things like this when I'm trying to, you know, show you my uh, my code and show and without having you you don't have to download anything you don't have to install anything it doesn't matter what OS you're running this will just run right in your browser um, there are some limitations to that which is that it's not extremely powerful uh, but it's it's pretty good for stuff like this if you have relatively simple test benches and you want to just uh, run a couple waveforms through it it's a great way to go so if you go to and you can actually see this too it's got like some collaboration features built right into the tool so if you go to edaplayground.com forward slash x forward slash 5cmq, all capitals, 5cmq, then you can actually see what I'm seeing here. I made this publicly available, which is great. So on the left side is the test bench code. We just talked about that. Here's the unit under test. Here's the procedure being called and the reports that we just talked through. Make it a little bigger so maybe it looks better. There, there's the reports and everything. And on the right side is the actual SPI master that we talked about in the previous video. So this is what you're testing. You can have multiple files um, being tested at the same time, and it works pretty smoothly. And you can try different um, you can try different tools and simulators too. I I don't know. I use this one. I guess seems to work. Um, click run. Let's let's check it out. Takes a few seconds. And blammo, we got uh, some waveforms to look at, which is great, super convenient. So you can you can click on the waveforms and you can find edges and you know it's got zoom capability. You can zoom in on things, you can zoom out, and like you know it's just really handy to have something like this freely available without a download. So I'm a fan. Um, you can uh, so if you want to add new signals to your waveform, click on get signals. Here's your test bench, here's your unit under test, and you can add you know, this, append it, close. Now it's at the bottom here, trailing edge, there you go. Um, you can click on things and remove them. It's gone. So uh, let's just look quickly here. Um, so we have C1 being sent out, there's your ITX data valid pulse, here's BE, here's EF, that looks good, it's being shipped out. We have uh, OSPI clock, which is toggling. That's nice. There we go. We have the MOSI signal, which looks like it's sending some data as well. And then the TX ready. So it's ready. We send something. It's not ready. It's ready again. We send something. It's not ready. It's ready. We send something. It's not ready. And then it's ready for the rest of the time. And again, this doesn't have chip select. We're going to add that in in the next video. So this looks pretty good. You can dive in here and see how it's counting. It's counting down and serializing things. So that looks nice. Um, and then uh, back on the in the log down here, we see some of those reports that we had uh, added in to the bottom of the test bench. It says sent out C1, received C1, sent out BE, received BE, sent out EF, received EF. So great. 
uh, this is working correctly. Um, does this say failure test complete? I don't know. I wish you could get rid of failure, but test complete. Yay, good. Uh, so there you go. So the Spy Master in VHDL is simulated again. If you want to change anything, definitely make sure that it works for your application, run through the simulation, um, but it should be really, really easy to get set up. So uh, check that out. Uh, the next video, we're going to be adding in the chip select on top of this. So it's going to be these, we're going to instantiate the spy master, but we're going to add some like a wrapper functionality around it to add chip select and support for sending multiple bytes at a time. So stay tuned for that. Hey, I'll just wanted to jump in at the end of this video real quick to say, please check out patreon.com forward slash Nandland and consider supporting me there. I would really appreciate it. It helps me cranking out these good tutorials and these videos. So if you found this valuable, uh, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting me. Keep me making good content. Uh, in addition to that, please consider getting yourself a Go board so you can actually program this code and try it out on real hardware. They're available at nanland.com. And thanks for your support.